So when you see me walking into a river on foot to fish, generally speaking, I'm gonna be going for trout. But today I'm doing something a little bit different. This is a bit closer to home, my local waters. I'm on one of Sydney's little coastal bass creeks. As you can see here, I'm up in the freshwater reaches. There's plenty of these little systems around Sydney and around all of coastal New South Wales for that matter. There's plenty of fishing that's accessible close to home for a lot of people if you want to do it. With bass, it can be a little bit difficult to find water that's easily fishable from the bank. It's often easier to fish for them from a boat or a kayak where you're in the middle of the river and you're casting towards shore. But there are these little creeks and rivers around where you've got bank access, you can go for a quick walk and wade fish. And it's a really nice way to fish because you don't have to have a lot of gear with you. There's not a lot of setup involved. It doesn't take a lot of time or preparation. You can just walk into one of these rivers, fish for a couple of hours, walk back out again, hop in the car and go home and get back to whatever you were doing before. So it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's the first time I've been out for bass on foot this season and it's still a little bit earlier in the season. It's getting towards the end of October, but we've had a lot of rain. As you can see, the river's pretty high. It's flowing pretty hard. So I don't quite know what to expect. I don't know whether the bass will have moved up yet, whether they're going to be interested. Uh, I'm gonna try a subsurface fly first. I've got a minnow pattern on here that I like to fish. I'll just give you guys a little bit of a look at that. There it is, it's like a, um, a zonka minnow with some flash and rabbit strip that they seem to really like early in the season. I've got some cicadas uh, in the box as well, which I may try at some stage, although it might be too early for that. I'm not hearing any cicadas in the trees yet, and I, I don't think the bass will really be on top water yet, but you never know. So, I'm not sure what to expect. We may find nothing, or we may find uh, a bronze beauty. So there's a bit of colour in the water today, there's not, not a hell of a lot of visibility so one of the things that I'm doing is I'm kind of slapping the fly down on the water. I'm trying to make as much commotion as I can with the fly. Uh, bass are not like trout, they will not spook at, uh, at a loud splash sort of coming through the pool. If anything it gets them more fired up and aggressive. They're definitely a more aggressive predator than a trout in that sense and um, especially when the visibility is low like this if you can make a bit of commotion in the water, a bit of vibration, a bit of noise the bass will quite often respond to that. Another thing that I'm doing here that I might not normally do in the ordinary course of bass fishing is I'm fishing the middle of the pools. Generally speaking in clear water the bass are going to be up right on the edges and around snags and under cover and so on but because there's so much colour in the water here, the bass don't need as much cover. They're more likely to be out in the prime feeding spots, in the spots where they don't have to work too hard and the food is just gonna to come to them. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time today fishing the middle bit of these pools with a gentle bit of flow where a bass can sit without having to work too hard in the current, but it's gonna have plenty of food coming past. submerged rock out there. The current is coming past it. I sort of cast upstream of there and let it sink down and fish through the middle of that channel and uh, the fly line just sort of suddenly stopped and tightened. I'll have another go at that.
I had a take there right at the end. I thought I was about to pull the fire. That is one of the problems with bass fishing on foot. <laughs> Sometimes you can't go in and get your flies. Anyway, I'm going to retie. We'll move on down a little bit, try a different pool. I'm just going to try a cicada through this pool. Seeing as I've had a couple of hits in there, uh, I don't know if anything will come up on the surface this early in the season, but we'll give it a shot. Right, let's go on down a little bit. There's a little bit of a path here at least. It's pretty hard work bush bashing through some of this stuff. Uh, you definitely want to wear gaiters. They really are gorgeous, some of these little creeks around Sydney. I've always got to remember to take some uh, fluid with me and drink, especially when you're uh, walk fishing like this, you can burn through quite a lot of energy and in the heat, you need to rehydrate. <laughs> Otherwise you'll end up with a terrible headache the next day or the next night. The birds are just beautiful. They're out here I think they're bell birds. Um, yeah. It's lovely, all the sounds out here. You can hear a little few cars in the background. There is a road nearby, but uh, you know, it's really not far away from, uh, from the road and all the cars and everything before you really start getting that beautiful sense of nature around you. Got a little bit of a clearing here where I can get on the riverbank and cast. There's not much back cast room as you can see so I'll probably mainly be roll casting or spay casting here. The river's pretty high at the moment because of all the rain that we've had. It's, uh, it's a bit easier to wade when it's down a little bit. You can wade through some of these sections when it's clearer and you can see where you're going but it's just a bit too high at the moment. I have actually put a little kayak in on, uh, on this creek too dragged it down from the road, just an ultra light one, uh, and that was interesting. I was able to get a little bit of a way upstream, which uh, is difficult to do on foot, and caught a few fish. So maybe I'll do that in another video. I just saw a small fish come up and take something off the surface. I don't know if it was a bass. They're only small though, they might just be herring. I might even try something smaller. And I'll just have a few more casts around with the cicada first. I think they're eating, they're only very small fish, they're probably herring. And they seem to be eating something quite small, like insects. All right, it's not happening with the cicada. I'm gonna see what else I've got. Straight after I said that, I just saw a bass. Yep, there he goes, up in the back there. That's a bass. That's a bass. Pretty good. Problem is, he's feeding right up in the shallow, in the shadows. In there, I've got no back cast here. Very hard to get into him. But maybe if he cruises out around that outer edge again, and I'm there in the spot at the right time, I might get a shot. 
Alright, I'm going to switch back to the minnow. Absolutely beautiful down here. Big goanna or something just took off down there. <laughs> Gave me a bit of a fright. I'm not entirely sure. It could have been a snake, of course. I think it was a goanna. Some nice little sections of sort of rapid and flowing water here. I'd just give that a little bit of a try. Bass can sometimes hold in uh, what you would think of as slightly more trouty sort of water, with a bit of current, a bit of flow. Most of the time in high summer. Oh, there goes that. Easy. <laughs> Most of the time in high summer, they like to be in um, slower water in the shade, just sort of doing it easy. But every now and again, um, you can find them in this running water, so it's always worth a shot. See if that water dragon shows up again. He hightailed it out of there. There he is. He's in the river. There's a nice little back eddy here and a deep section where this rapid sort of flows in. I have caught bass in this area before, so I'm going to give this a shot. It's only a fairly narrow spot here, and I haven't got much room to work with in terms of back cast or anything, but I'll just do what I can to get the fly in there. We only need to fish fairly short. When the water's lower, there's a spot here where you can sort of get in and cast, but uh, it's underwater at the moment and I haven't got my wading boots with me. So, uh, anyway, there is a log down here that I may be able to get out on and cast from. Uh, we'll just have to have a look. many of these guys on uh, on bass water they're just great and uh, they're often a good indication of the areas of the river where the fish are going to be too because they tend to be hunting similar bait to the bass so I always take it as a good sign if I see a lizard on a log definitely worth fishing the area there was another one there was another one sitting just in on that log there a second ago and he took off into that pool so I'll fish this little bit I'll try and get a bit of a cast from here. I've got a little bit of back cast room if I kind of get right out there. Get up into this pool. It's a little bit hard to access, but I'll 
I'll do what I can. So I was just straightening the, uh, the hook back up with the pliers there. One of the things that I do when I fish this way, um, and generally when I fish for bass, is I fish quite heavy leader. Um, I generally like to fish 12 pound maxima. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is the bass don't care, but it does give you the ability to retrieve your fly out of trees and snags and things like that. Sometimes when, if you were fishing light, you would just be snapping off so many flies. So uh, it's a bit of a tackle saver an old car wreck down here it's uh it's been here for decades i'd say but it's actually moved down a little bit since last time i was here so must have come off the road way up above in the gorge there and uh i guess there's no way that they were going to retrieve it out of here one of the axles down there Might have moved, uh, been moved around a little bit in the last flood that we had. A bit of a path here at least. Some sections of this you've got to sort of bush bash through. The closer you get to the road, <laughs> the more civilised it is. Here we go. Here's the path. So I reckon that's it for me today, guys. No fish, unfortunately. That's the way it is sometimes. Uh, I think the water's a little bit dirty and it's still fairly early in the season and the river's a little bit high. I might do better coming back here in a month's time when the water level has hopefully come down a little bit. The bass might be looking up a little bit more and taking cicadas and surface flies. And that'll be a lot of fun. So. Even though I didn't catch anything today, still had a really nice time, really enjoyed it. It's absolutely beautiful down here. I mean, what a gorgeous, gorgeous forest. So get out there and explore. You know, there's plenty of these creeks around. They're fairly accessible to everybody. If you're willing to do a little bit of walking and potentially a little bit of bush bashing, then you can usually find spots where you can at least get a cast in and fish. As you've seen, some of the difficulty is in simply finding a spot where you can get a cast in because of all of the trees and growth and difficulty with accessing the river but there's always spots if you're willing to explore so get out there and give it a go it's beautiful it's right on our back doorstep and we should make the most of it now i've got heaps more videos on the channel here guys of all kinds of fly fishing so i'm going to recommend something for you and uh, it'll appear on the end screen just about here, hopefully. Thanks for watching. See you next time.